Hi friends, brothers and sisters. My name is Nino from the Servants of the Living God community in Ormoc, Leyte. And welcome to Pathways of Hope. Trivia! Did you know that the Philippines is the only country in the world, apart from Vatican, that does not allow divorce? Yes, you heard that right. The Philippines is the only country in the world that does not allow divorce. The Philippines is around 80% Catholics, and their Catholic teaching tells us that divorce is unacceptable. But what is divorce? According to the Oxford Dictionary, divorce is the legal dissolution of marriage by a court or a competent body. It's the dissolution of marriage. Other synonyms for dissolution are disruption, destruction, and interruption. Hearing those synonyms, suddenly divorce sounds like an attack, doesn't it? Someone wants to interrupt our marriages. Someone wants to disrupt our marriages. Someone wants to destruct our marriages. But who is that someone? And what is his motive? Before we begin to answer those questions, let's first read from the Gospel for today, which actually talks about divorce. It's from Mark chapter 10, verses 1 to 12, and it says, Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees and came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Now let me go back to our first question earlier. Who is that someone who is trying to terminate, disrupt, and distract marriages? And what is his motive? Is it the unfaithful spouse? Is it the partner who verbally or physically abuses? Is it the third party who wants to break apart the relationship? Yes, all of these are sins, but all of these are also harassments. Harassments from the evil one himself. For everything that God creates, he hates. Everything that God ordains, he hates. And in general, the enemy hates everything good that comes from God. That is why he hates even our marriages. And that is why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, St. Paul reminds us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What do we do then? To protect our marriages from being harassed by the evil one. Just like any, any battle, we must be wearing our full complete armor. St. Paul continues to detail this in his letter to the Ephesians. He says that we must always be wearing the belt of truth or God's truth, the breastplate of righteousness that protects us from Satan's deceptions. Feet fitted with the readiness to share God with others all the time. The shield of faith, which protects us when we begin to doubt in the face of trials. The helmet of salvation, which protects us from spiritual death. And last but not the least, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God Himself, which is our offensive weapon against Satan and against his evil schemes. Attacks on marriages will always be prevalent in this world. For the devil hates unity, just like how he hates the union of the three divine persons in the Holy Trinity. But we continue to stand firm. We continue to be alert. We continue to pray in the Spirit. 
for God is with us. We may be in the world, but we are not of it. And we have Jesus who protects us and intercedes for us. Just as he prays in John chapter 17, verse 15. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, Father, but that you protect them from the evil one. Amen. If you have been blessed by this short reflection, please like and share Pathways of Hope to your friends and loved ones. Again, my name is Nino. Thank you and have a blessed day.